In May of 2017, I became public enemy number one at a college where I had been a very popular professor for 14 years. The bearded man with his hands on his head is Brett Weinstein, a biology professor at the college. He criticized an effort to have white students and staff stay away from campus for a day. For that, he says he was labeled a racist. There was a long-standing tradition at Evergreen called Day of Absence, in which faculty, staff, and students of color did not come to campus for one day to emphasize the importance of the role that they were playing there. In 2017, white people were asked not to come to campus. This did not sit well with me. I wrote a letter saying that this was an unacceptable policy and that I intended to show up on campus. Despite having been a liberal for my whole life, I was told that I was a racist. On May 23rd, 50 students that I had never met showed up disrupted my class, accused me of racism, and demanded that I either resign or be fired. The protesters filmed our interaction, and it went viral. As news of the protests spread across the country, counter demonstrations came to campus, and police arrested a New Jersey man after they say he phoned in a threat to kill people on campus. On the second day of the protests, the chief of police called me. She told me not to come to campus because the police could not protect me there. The administrators sided with the protesters, even though they knew full well there was no evidence of racism. The administration couldn't fire me because I was tenured and because it was a public college and I had the right to free speech. My wife was literally the college's most popular professor and I was very well liked, but ultimately we were forced to leave. There was just simply no way to continue in that environment. This example of cancel culture has been widely circulated. The fact is this turned our lives upside down. This phenomenon is spreading. Sooner or later it comes for everyone, and when it does, you'll find yourself in a hall of mirrors. You won't know what's what. I am not a racist. Everything about the life I have led would tell you that. But the fact is, it didn't matter. It was not enough to save my job. The story that was being told about me, in the end, won, even though it wasn't true. Well, please welcome virtually from Oregon, Dr. Brett Weinstein. Doctor, thank you for joining us today. And thanks for having me. Now, this is a, a sad and tragic example of what Pierce describes in his book, Wake Up. And the thing I, I guess that bothers me the most about it is people weren't really interested in what you truly believed or what you truly stood for, but instead finding an example that they could use to springboard into a, a cause. Were, were you used in that way? Yes, and I think that's maybe the most important thing about the event that took place is that there was, they needed a villain and they didn't think very carefully about who they targeted and how well that story was going to play. They just needed someone to, to play the part of a racist. And by choosing me, it created uh, an ability to see essentially behind the curtain. Um, my students knew that I wasn't a racist. Most of my faculty colleagues did as well. And so the fact that I was pursued as if I had said something egregious allowed the world in some sense to see that this isn't about guilt at all. It's about power. But Piers, this is the mob mentality that you're describing in the cancel culture, right? It's an absolutely classic, and if I may say so, utterly disgraceful example of cancel culture. We need to cancel this insidious cancel culture. Well, hey there, thanks so much for watching. And while I have you, do you have a story or a question for me? If so, I do want to hear from you. Click on the link in the description and tell me what's going on. You just might end up right here with me on the show. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Click that little red button below. You know you want to. What are you waiting for? Do it!